You ever heard that phrase, it's like watching a crash? Because what it means, at least to me, is when you, you if you're looking at a crash, it's like you know it's going to happen, you see it coming, but you just, you can't take your eyes off of it because you're just wondering how this thing is going to turn out, even though you know it's going to turn out bad. And that's what it seems like with this whole Odell Beckham Jr. and his relationship with the Browns. Now, on here, we always say that timing is everything because it is. Yesterday was the NFL's trade deadline, but hours before that, well, way hours before that, Odell Beckham Jr.'s father, he was on YouTube and he caught wind of the video that has blown up, so good for him, uh, but he caught wind of the video, which was highlighting Baker Mayfield missing Odell Beckham Jr. throughout this season. So he screen captured that video. Now he did do it sideways. So if you had to watch, if you watch it, you had to like turn your phone like that. So we got to work with him on that. But he screen captured it and he uploaded it to his Instagram. And he, y'all remember all the hashtags that we went through yesterday. We ain't got to go through them again. But he was letting it be known that he is fed up with Browns quarterback Baker Mayfield and his his son just not getting the passes that he should be getting. And even when people, they would co-sign in the comment section, he would co-co-sign in his responses to them and let it be known like, yeah, you're right. Baker ain't it. He's not the one. So, and with that, what made the, the, what made us, the situation that much worse was that it wasn't only his daddy that was chiming in. You got LeBron James, he chimed in too. Then there were some other famous people that started chiming in as well. And they were like, oh, free Odell. Odell need to be up out of there. The Browns need to trade Odell. And all of this was before the trade deadline. Funny how I, I didn't see anything after. I saw everything before. So again, timing is everything. But even though all those messages came from his dad, came from LeBron, came from this, that, and the other... We know ultimately they came from Odell Beckham Jr. And with that being said, uh, this relationship with him and the Browns, it seems as if it may be done. Because something that I said in yesterday's video where we talked about it was that I said uh, envision a scenario where Odell Beckham Jr. actually stays with the Browns. And that's what it is for now, even though I don't think it'll be for long. But... He's with the Browns right now. And I said, envision a scenario where Odell Beckham Jr. actually stays past the trade deadline. This, the, the post from his dad, from LeBron, from everybody, they run the risk of alienating him from the team. I said that in yesterday's video. And that's what it seems as is happening. But now that I think about it, now that I see this stuff that's going on, it makes you wonder and it makes you think, is this what Odell Beckham Jr.? actually wants because if he alienates himself from the team then the team has two choices they could either be like you know what you're not playing we're not gonna play you we're gonna pay you we gotta pay you but we're not gonna play you you're gonna have to sit out we're gonna give you the deshaun watson treatment even though it's obviously not the same situation but we're gonna give you the deshaun watson treatment where well, we pay you but we don't play you no doubt they can you could be like okay well all right or what he would really love, I'm assuming, haven't talked to Odell Beckham Jr., at least not recently. But anyway, what he would probably love would be the second option and if they decided to cut ties, which I think they're going to end up doing. But that is what it seems like they wanted. So earlier today, it came out that uh, the Browns told Odell Beckham Jr., uh, you're excused from practice. You ain't got to practice. And when you get stuff like that, mm, yeah, that's, that sounds like the beginning of the end. And it is. It's the beginning of the end. Because that's what's going on over in Philly. That's what happened with him, Philly and Ben Simmons. And you know that relationship is on, it's, it's on a crash course. It's bad. It's all kinds of bad. So with, all that, with, with them, because, you know, they, pe teams love to practice. Coaches love when you practice. You're like, oh, practice? Let's go. Come on, man. But if they're telling you, no, 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 don't even practice. Don't worry about it. That's a big yikes. So then they took it a step further. But they said Kevin Stefanski told players that Odell Beckham Jr. is essentially not on the team right now. So this could be Kevin Stefanski really trying to get a grip of that locker room and let it be known like, hey, 
act like Odell ain't even here. Well, he technically ain't here because we sent him home for practice, but act like he ain't even on the team. And this could be Kevin Stefanski making sure that he doesn't lose that locker room because he does not want to end up like these past Browns coaches to where things have just went haywire and they go haywire fast and it just ends up erupting. Because Kevin Stefanski has been probably the best Browns coach that they've had in forever. Because even though they still had drama, they still had their trauma, he has definitely helped them turn the corner uh, from where they once were. And under uh, with Baker Mayfield, ever since they drafted him, they had uh, Freddie Kitchens and they had, uh, who was the one right before him? Uh, it's, it's slipping my mind and I don't, I don't want to dwell on it. But those coaches, it seemed like things were sort, sort, sort of starting to shift a little bit, sort of starting to change a little bit. But it was like, mm, no. But then under... Uh, Stefanski, it's like, all right, they, they seem to be a little stable now. All right, cool. So, and then what I always say, AFC North, man, the better the teams, the better the division, the better the competition. Everybody makes everybody that much better. You see the Browns, they still in it. The Steelers, they in it. Uh, the Bengals, uh, yeah, they certainly in it. Uh, and the Ravens, they obviously in it too. So, this it makes the division that much better. Like, the, the AFC North is a good version of the NFC East. Well, because NFC East is usually, usually all them boys are bad. Usually. You know, the Cowboys, they're doing their thing right now. But then you look at everybody else. Look at Washington. Look at Philly. Look at the Giants. And it's a big yikes. So right now, Dallas is coasting. But anyway, back to the AFC North and back to the Browns. Um, that I, I just think that Kevin Stefanski wants it to be known like, hey, I'm the leader here. I'm the captain of this ship. And Odell Beckham Jr. is not. And right now, he's not even on this ship. So then, it, it, it got taken another, another notch further. It got taken another step further. Because Adam Schefter reported that Odell Beckham Jr. was excused from practice today, like we were just talking about. Uh, but the Browns are discussing the wide receiver's future with his agent. So, if they're discussing his future with his agent, what does that mean? <laughs> like, the... What's there to do? Literally, the only thing that you can do with Odell Beckham Jr. right now, especially because it's past the trade deadline, you can either keep him or cut him. That's it. You can keep him or cut him. So if they're discussing his future with the team, they're going to cut him, at least in my opinion. It, well, I'm just waiting on the announcement now. I feel like it'll be any, any second now, any day now, that Odell Beckham, we get the, oh, y'all get a notification, Twitter gonna go crazy, Instagram gonna cra go crazy, YouTube, all that stuff gonna go crazy. The Browns release Odell Beckham Jr. I'm expecting it now. I'm expecting it because, again, all this stuff, we've seen so many scenarios of, of this stuff in the past with different players and whatnot. The coaches don't want you at practice. That's one thing. And, uh, then, then they say, if he tells his team, you, oh, he's not on the team right now? Act like he ain't not even here. Yeah, man, that's... So, it, it's, it's, we're expecting him to be gone any second now. Oh, again, my opinion. I would be very surprised if he stays on this Browns team. Very surprised. But if he does get cut, he wouldn't just become a free agent like that. Odell Beckham Jr., in order for him to be released, or oh, uh, for him to be a free agent, he would have to clear through waivers from 31 other NFL teams. That's not going to happen. Somebody's going to pick him up. Now, he would hope that if he got released, then he would clear waivers through all 32 teams. I mean, through all 31 other teams. So he could be a free agent. He could choose where he went. But if he doesn't choose it, then it'll be selected for him. And you got to feel like if he does get released, you got to feel like the Raiders... They will be a team. I know there's been a lot of talk about the Packers, them being a possibility to get Odell Beckham Jr. So it all just, and, and the way that the waiver wire goes, it goes by your record. So the worse your record is, the higher your claim in the waiver wire. The better your record, the lower your claim is in the way. Same way with the draft. Except, well, besides with the Rams, because you know they trade all their picks away. But besides the Rams, that, that's how the draft works. The better your record was the previous year, your draft picks are lower. The worse your record was the previous year, your draft picks are higher. And that's the way that works. Anyway, team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. And just like I expect Odell Beckham Jr. to be, within the next 48 hours, I'm out.